How you doing? I'm Greg, and I sing in the Bouncing Souls. Uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's not often that I actually get to see a band that's been doing it longer than us. So, um, yeah, it's pretty cool to be on tour with them and uh, be supporting a big headlining act because we haven't been a support act in more than 10 years. We're always headlining. So it's actually a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, I think as far as individually, we've definitely, our music's brought a lot of positivity to people's lives. And uh, in turn, I've seen a whole lot of people start bands and. You know, I'll never take credit for that, but I think, you know, we've played a little small part in a lot of people's musical experience as far as them learning Bouncing Soul songs and being inspired by Bouncing Soul songs and wanting to propel that energy into their lives and make, uh, make their own band, make their own music, explore their own creativity. And um, that's been pretty awesome, just being a small part of that. Yeah, there's never a most memorable. There's so many, you know, like, you know, going all the way back, to getting our, like, doing our first little tour, you know, like, at the time, that was the biggest moment, you know, and then put out our first seven inch, like, that was the biggest thing. And then the next, the biggest thing was getting distributed by BYO, like, that was huge. Every little thing is, you can't take one, and, I mean, there's a lot of, Things like we played at the Budokan in, in Tokyo, you know, there's like on the, in a worldly sense of like achievements, you know, and playing at like Wembley Arena and those kind of things. But then there's the day to day things where like people write us messages and tell us that we saved their lives and things like that. Like, so that's like huge. And you can't even really figure out how big that is, you know, so. It's, not, it's hard to name one thing. You ask me one thing, I cannot name one thing because it's a lot of things. No, I never even thought in those terms. You know, like, I never even thought we would survive. You know, honestly, like, no concept. You know, of, you know, just doing one thing at a time, like getting to the next gig, like, that's getting, putting out the next record. Like, that's always been, it's always and still is. So then all of a sudden you're looking back and you're like, oh wow, we've been a band for 20 years, but I never thought about it in those terms. I never understood what it would be like to be a band in, for 20 years. I had no, you don't have a concept of it until you do it. Well, I think music will generate a spirit in us, you know, and then it can be focused into different things, you know, that camaraderie and just camaraderie an aspect of punk rock and Bouncing Souls definitely has like a camaraderie type of spirit that we always love and that plugs right into being like on a team in any way you know what I mean and that's what it's about it's not you know it can be soccer or hockey or something but it's about that camaraderie I think and um, I think that's probably that similar spirit at works for hockey and, and punk rock. Um, the internet has just been the biggest thing I think that's changed for all of us I mean it changed the world completely changed how we talk to each other, changed how we communicate, changed how music is brought to everyone. So it changed, so hence changing the punk scene as well, you know. Um, yeah, that's the biggest thing. We uh, <clears throat> wanted to do something different than the regular CD release, so we decided after we left Epitaph, our contract was up, we wanted to release songs digitally on our own label and then just see how that went. Like, no plan for a CD release. So we spent the end of 2008 writing and recording the songs that were gonna be the 20 year anniversary releases to be released on the first of every month in all of 2009. And then we were on tour around the world that whole year. And the experiment, the success of it was all year long without any really advertising money we got a lot of press because there'd be a song that would come out on the first of every month and we'd get write-ups about it all year long. So that was the little genius in it. That worked out really well. That was the total success because we didn't have a big label behind it. But we did have this and that worked out great. We didn't sell a ton off online because as we were out doing shows and people were like, so you guys have new music, when's the CD coming out? And we're like, well, there's already like three or four songs out. And those people were like, oh, 
downloads, I don't do that, you know, like, when's the CD coming out, you know, and so then we found there's like a definitive line of people that are like, okay, I got the downloads, and then there's other people who are like, I'll just wait for the CD, and then we're like, okay, well, we're going to have to make a CD for sure now. So by the middle and the end of the year, we were like, okay, when let's put the CD out, let's come up with the title and complete the idea, and then put it out in February or whatever, beginning of this year. Pretty much the story. Well, this year we're doing this little stretch with Bad Religion. We have a really fun tour of Australia and New Zealand happening with Hot Water Music, and we actually recorded a song of theirs, and they record, record a song of ours. It's going to come out on a 7-inch. It's going to be like kind of like Australia tour, Hot Water, Bouncing Soul 7-inch, which is really fun. And we might even play that tonight here in Montreal. And... Uh, then we're going to write some tunes and see how it goes. Like, no plans. The plans haven't made themselves clear yet, but we will see what they shall be. That's the hardest part. They happen every day, but the hardest part is trying to think of one. Um, um, but my default funny tour moment when I can't think of anything is when I got attacked by a dog on stage in Germany. <laughs> Yeah, it's true. We were playing a squat in Germany, and uh, it was just a bar, and there's like, um, just about to go on stage. I step up onto, onto the stage, and a dog just comes and just gets me by the arm, like a pit bull. And I just froze, and everyone in the place was just like, you know, they froze and stared. It was like the music stopped, you know? And the dog, he had me. He's like, he was not biting me, but he's like, I got you. You know, he's like, just clamping down enough for it to hurt a little bit, and that I was not going anywhere. And, you know, I just played dead. I was just like, <laughs> don't struggle, because this dog will tear me to pieces, you know. And then, the split second after I had that thought, I hear someone scream from the back, like, at their dog, and the dog lets go, runs away. And then I'm just standing there, like, such an awkward moment. And I was like, oh, my God. Now I have to start playing the show. That's my funny... Um, thanks for being here. The last show we had here in Montreal was awesome. So um, I'm sure we're going to have a good time tonight. Thanks for always being here, and we'll see you out there. Have a good one.